Hi guys, this is Rick. Hope everyone's having a great day. I thought I'd do a quick video response to Bob, uh, who sent me a, an email and basically said, um, how do you get the H2 microphone to work in sync with your video uh, camera? Um, I want to record my music I composed with me singing um, and then transfer it to my computer to make DVDs. What do you think? Okay, what Bob is basically talking about is filming something using um, uh, obviously a video camera and recording the sound independently. Now, normally what I tend to use and recommend is a Zoom H2, which is a really high quality microphone and it's got a built-in digital recorder. The problem is you need to obviously match the sound recording that you've got with the video uh, recording that you've made. So this little video is gonna show you how to do it. Well, first things first, you need to get yourself one of these. This is a clapperboard or a slate. And uh, you, the option, you've got the option to put uh, information about the uh, various scenes that you're doing, because obviously if you're filming and your sound is being recorded independently, then there's probably not gonna be any sound on your video uh, to give you any hint as to what the the actual scene is going to be about so it's important to have some information about the scene that you're recording and uh, obviously the other thing is the snap shut now this is the most important bit as soon as you snap it shut what it does it generates a visible peak or a visible spike on the uh, profile of your audio and now I did want to show you some screenshots of exactly how that works but unfortunately YouTube uh, last year pulled down one of my videos because I had screenshots of my editing software and they said it was copyright infringement. So what I'm going to do now is draw you some sketches. So here we go, this is, <clears throat> imagine this is our computer screen and this is our video editing software. Okay, now, <clears throat> there you go, put a little window sign up there. Um, right, so what you need to do is this. This is your editor, okay? You've got your imported files here. All right, I'm, now I'm sort of doing from memory uh, Adobe Premiere. This is your main view screen with a little play button there. Now, here's what you do, okay? This is your audio, okay? This is the audio track, the separate audio track that you have recorded, and this is your video. Okay, <laughs> there we go, little camera there. Okay, so what you've got on here is your timeline. The various tracks on the timeline. And what you need to do is, first of all, you drag your, uh, your audio track onto the timeline. Doesn't matter where you put it, um, but it goes onto your timeline. Now, what will happen is your audio track will look something like this. Uh, something like that anyway um, <laughs> you get the idea okay so basically this is the sound repre or representation of the sound and as the timeline or the time bar comes along and does this this is a, as it plays this is what the sound looks like now when you make a snap on the on the uh, on the clapperboard or on the slate what happens is you get a very very distinct visible peak like so Okay, so you actually end up with a big spike or a big peak, big, um, what's the name, when you get the snap from the clapperboard. So basically you, you put your video, um, you, you drag your video onto the, the video track, so you've, you've got your, your video track playing. Now physically, inside your video track, at the point where you see the clapperboard snapping shut, all right, you, you actually stop your timeline there, and then all you do is you move you drag your audio, okay, until the peak of your audio joins up with the moment on the video. So what will happen is your, your snapping shut of the clapperboard that you physically see on the video will correspond with the moment on the sound profile when the clapperboard is snapped shut. Now, if you can't afford or if you don't want to go out and buy a clapperboard, all you gotta do is clap your hands, but make sure you visibly see it on the video. So if I'm gonna um, record sound now, I would, I would literally do that. And then obviously the spike that appears on the sound profile 
uh, in the editing software of you know your where your sound file is um, you'll just simply match it up to the moment where you see the clap or the hands come together the only advice general sort of hands-on advice I can give you about doing this method is it gets to be a real pain in the rear if you keep stopping and starting the video camera because you have to match up the sound every single time you hit the pause button on the recorder or you know the, the video recorder you have to stop the audio recording and restart it and you have to match every single scene up so quite often what I tend to do is just leave the camera running and leave the audio running and then just just let them run and run and run and then just go in and edit afterwards because you don't have to constantly match up the sound and the video. Um, if you're using mini DV tape, you ideally you need a, a camera with a quartz driven motor. That's because it's extremely accurate because otherwise what you may find over time is that the camera is running just slightly slower or just slightly faster than the audio recording. So over the over the course of the recording, what will happen is the sound will slowly fall out of sync. So um, ideally you want a, a high quality camera, preferably with a quartz driven um, engine on it. Uh, apart from that, that's all I can really think of. Just uh, sort of hoping that uh, it's gonna answer Bob's question. So good luck with the filming, Bob. Hope it was useful to anybody else that was watching. And thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time.